Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Tasty Tidbits Podcast. Get ready to receive rich, well-seasoned, and tasteful tidbits to transform your life. Each week, Dr. Tiffany comes to you with inspirational encouragement and thought-provoking interviews to help you revolutionize your walk with God. Are you hungry for more of His presence? Then get ready. And now, your host, pastor, author, and motivational speaker, Dr. Tiffany Watkins. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Tasty Tidbits. I am your host, Dr. Tiffany Watkins, and I'm so excited to have you again with us on today. I want to talk about something that I think that we all have dealt with, struggled with, or have even been concerned about, and that is talking about breaking food strongholds. We all have our favorite foods that we like. We all have uh, things that maybe that we love more than the other, or we may even, you know, when we get depressed, some of us may eat more than others, and there's a lot of things that goes along with that. But my special guest today, I'm so excited to have her. She's going to be able to talk with us a little bit more about that. And when we begin to go into this, I know that it will begin to help you. And Julia Fixie, she is a trained, certified, and experienced health coach specializing in weight loss, mental health, and emotional eating. Her specialty is helping hopeless dieter who has tried every diet and failed learn how to master their relationship with food so they can finally succeed at their goals and have victory and joy at the same time. She has personally overcome a life of obesity and can help you do the same with her joyful, practical, life-changing, biblical uh, Bible study program. And so, Julia, thank you so much for being a part of the podcast today. It's just an honor to have you, and I'm excited to hear what we're going to talk about today. So thank you for being a part of the podcast today, Julia. Oh, thank you for inviting me, Tiffany. It's really an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. And just tell the listeners a little bit more about yourself that I didn't mention before. Well, yes, my name is Julia Fixie, and I have struggled with yo-yo dieting and weight gain, and I have had so many food frustrations my whole life for as long as I can remember. And it took me a really, really long time to sort of figure out how I was going to manage food on a spiritual level, because for me, it was more about a spiritual challenge I was having than, you know, a diet plan and what I should eat and what I shouldn't eat. I really needed to figure out the spiritual component. And once I did that, things really started to change because, you know, with Jesus, Jesus mm-hmm. changes everything. So mm-hmm. when I included him in my food, I saw a tremendous amount of change. Wow. And I love that. And I, I know we're going to get into that because I would love to hear Uh, more about that. But today we're talking about breaking food strongholds. So first, before we go into a little bit more in depth, let the listeners know a little bit about what a food stronghold is and how we can recognize it. Yes, food strongholds are tricky, right? Um, And I think it's a little bit different for all of us. A food stronghold can be an actual food that we just can't let go of, something that we really, really need. Um, I had a client once who um, her husband had passed away and she just needed chocolate every night because she was so lonely and she could not give up the chocolate at night because it was serving a purpose to help her feel better and kind of help solve that loneliness and pain problem. Mm -hmm. I would consider that in that situation, chocolate's not bad. Chocolate's a beautiful, wonderful thing, but it was affecting her health and she was using it as a tool, almost like a drug. Do you know what I'm trying Mm -hmm. to say? Mm -hmm. Also, we can have food strongholds that are uh, behavior. So for me, I was a compulsive eater. I didn't realize I was eating until I had eaten about a half a bag of chips And so for me, I had to figure out this stronghold of compulsive eating and other things can be a stronghold like overeating where we just feel like it's not going to be enough. I mean, I used to be able to look at a huge buffet of food and say, well, where's the food for everybody else? Because this (laughs) isn't going to be enough food for me. It's not going to be enough food to fix my uncomfortable feelings right now being at this party. And it's kind of funny to say that out loud, but that's honestly how I felt like I'm going to need a lot of food (laughs) to fix this uncomfortable feeling. 
And I just needed more and more and more food to fix uncomfortableness, which is what addiction does, which is what using something does to us. We start out with just a little bit and that works, but the next time it doesn't work as well. And, and you know, it's one bag of chips is good, but then the next time we need two, and then the next time we we've got the jumbo party bag, you know, and then we feel bad. So we're eating it by ourselves at night. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of thing that is really hard to overcome when we've got a spiritual need to be comforted by food and our body starts to get chemically addicted to certain foods, it can be become very difficult to overcome the strongholds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's so good because, you know, if we don't deal with that spiritual issue, then we're going to, we're going to deal with it one way or the other in some type of addiction. If we don't turn it into prayer, if we don't change it into a positive, um, we will turn to certain addictions a lot of times. And I've seen where that's happened. Uh, and so it's important for us to deal with that spiritual issue, recognize where, where we're lonely, recognize the issue that we're dealing with that we may be going through so that we can um, make sure that we are addressing the issues that we're dealing with and we can be able to heal from that. And so I think that's very important. But, you know, Julia, in your book, Dear Food, I Love You, I Hate You, Don't Leave Me, you talk about how you overcame a life of obesity, yo-yo dieting, and food addiction. And you finally lost, I believe it was 60 pounds, and were able to keep it off. What changed and how did you finally overcome that emotional eating? Yeah, that's true. You know, I struggled with this my whole life. And I've loved Jesus since I was five years old. So Jesus was in my life. I was right. a Christian. I loved him and I served him, but I couldn't figure out why prayer, um, the way that I was praying and um, have my life as a Christ follower and also my food life. And what changed for me was I spent an, about a year asking Jesus if he really cared about my little food problem. And if he cared, was he too busy? Was it too much for me to ask him to help me not eat mm -hmm. unhealthy food? And, you know, is it these things go through my mind? You know, is it too late at night to be asking God to like step in? Can he? What solutions might he have? Does he even have time for me? Because it's just food. And we think about all that's what I was saying in my mind. It's just food, right? We think of all the problems that God has to deal with. And I learned in that year of just asking God if he really could, you know, care enough to help me with my food. He taught me that, of course, he does because it's important to me and he loves me. And also my food habits were affecting my body and my health. And I needed to think about my health and my body to be able to serve him to the maximum capacity that I can while I'm here. And so he cares about me. He cares about my heart and he cares about my body. And the other amazing thing that I learned that changed my life was that when I was eating a brownie bite or chicken nuggets to soothe a pain or a hurt, as small of a pain of a hurt, it might be, or a big as of a pain of a hurt, it might be, I was not going to him to heal my pain and hurt. And so I couldn't get a real resolution for that. And so once I put the, once I had my good nutrition and I put the extra food down and I said, um, and I, you know, I had that like moment of, I need to eat this food right now. The foods for me will probably be different for the foods for you or your audience. But for me, it was like pasta and rice and, um, oh gosh, brownies, these baked goods, you know, once mm -hmm. I s decided, Hey, I'm going to pause and I'm going to, I'm going to think about why I'm eating this unhealthy food. And so much of it, I'm just going to stop where I am and not feel bad that I already did it. Cause sometimes we aren't thinking about it. Right. But mm -hmm. when we remember, and the Holy spirit prompts us to say, Lord, what's going on with me right now? And think about just listening to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. And am I hurting? Am I frustrated? Am I angry? Am I tired? Am I bored? And then taking that emotion to the Lord and praying with him about a solution and thinking about scripture or a worship song, what can help me with my heart? Because there's not enough food in the world to cure my heartache, but the <laughs> right. Lord in a moment can give us yes. Jesus peace, right? And healing. Yes. 
And that's what changed for me. I realized I was going to food first for soothing. And when I stopped doing that and I went to the Lord for soothing and help and healing, now I had the power of the living God in my life, changing my life, working with me. That's something food can never do. That's so good. That is so good, you know, because we have to make sure that we put, like you said, talk to the Lord and say, Lord, why am I doing this? Because, you know, a lot of times, Julia, I think about it. Most of the time when I eat, if I if I'm eating when I shouldn't eat, it's like maybe after 10 o'clock. And I'm all day, I'm not as hungry until about 10 o'clock at night, but that's when I'm tired. That's when I've been going all day. That's when I've been working my ministry or the business or, you know, I'm helping people. And so by the time I finally do eat, uh, if you don't set yourself up for success in your meal, then you're going to find whatever you can to eat. And then you're just going to eat and binge eat to get full and to get what we call comfort food and to make you feel better. And it's all about even about, I believe about planning too, um, so that it can help you put you in a better position uh, to be able to eat effectively and eat good for your body. Because I've noticed also is that when we don't eat the right foods, it even makes us tireder, you know, and it makes us even more drab. Uh, You know, sometimes our body craves for it. I remember the other day I was like, I need some fresh vegetables or I need some, a fresh salad. I was just craving a fresh salad. And when I got the salad, it just made I, my whole body just feel better. Now I'm a type of person that don't eat salads all the time. I used to hate salads, but I pray, like you said, Lord, help me to love salads a little more, you know, <laughs> help me to prayer, do it. Yeah. <laughs> I did because I hated it. It's like every day, but I was like, Lord, help, you know, change my taste buds, help me to, you know, love salad a little more. And I find myself, you know, eating it and I feel better. Um, and so I, I totally agree that it could be so many things. And, but a lot of times I find with me, it's just being doing overworking. And then after that, being eating so much. So what does that mean? I need to take time with the Lord. I need to slow down and just let him minister to me. And listeners, that's sometimes what we have to do. Because like you said, Julia, a lot of times we just really need to sit down and figure out why am I putting this in my mouth? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes. And actually, sometimes it can be hard to pinpoint the feeling because like you said, at the end of the day, these these things that occur to us all day long that cause us uh, pain, uncomfortable feelings, sadness, exhaustion, they stack up like bricks, right? And we're kind Mm -hmm. of like, it's so busy that we don't see all these different things that email that we got that made hurt our feelings or the some somebody at work, you know, left us doing a job that that we weren't prepared for. And so all of these bricks kind of stack up. And then at the end of the day, we sit down and it's like they we see them all and we, we feel the weight of them. And that's when it's a great time to maybe get out a piece of paper and just journal, like what happened and how I feel right now and pray about it. I actually sometimes have a hard time identifying the emotion, um, in, 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 right there in the moment. And I'll, I'll pray about it. And so I have in my book on page 46 and 47, I've got a bunch of emotions listed in kind of like these boxes, according to category, just to sort of get a feel for what emotional eating food drivers we have, like what exact emotion is driving me to the food. I realized as I kind of took notes and journaled and I did my food timeline, which I think is chapter two, that for me, loneliness is a significant feeling that will drive me to comfort food. And Mm -hmm. so I can feel lonely in a big way, And I can also feel lonely in teeny tiny ways. And it's surprising how as a sensitive person, you know, if I'm, if I'm alone or if I'm feeling lonely, you know, I can kind of go to that comfort food pretty quickly. And I've been able to identify a few specific emotions, not all the emotions, but Mm -hmm. I know if I'm going to be lonely, I got to pray, get some Mm -hmm. scripture around me, ask the Holy spirit to give me supernatural, um, you know, Mm self-control because (laughs) self-control is a fruit of the spirit. It is not a fruit of my flesh. Let me tell you. So I'm going to need the fruit of the spirit in my life. (laughs) And the Holy spirit comes through. He's so faithful and loving and kind. And I am constantly amazed at the kindness. I don't know why I am amazed 
but the gentleness and kindness and support and love uh, our Lord gives us. Like we're his daughter, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. he just loves us. And when we go to him and say, Hey dad, could you help me with this? He's like, yep, I'm there. I'm here for you. So (laughs) keep including him in our food when we remember to do that. And the Holy spirit will remind us. (laughs) I remember one time I was staring at the fridge and I really wanted some ice cream. And, um, the Holy spirit was like, well, you know, remember to pray. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to pray right now. I want to have ice cream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I, I said, okay, Lord. Okay. All right. I will pause. It's still a prayer pause here. And in my head, I'm like, I'm going to eat ice cream anyway, but I'll pray. And I was just reminded, you know, why don't the Lord remind me, why don't you start with some blueberries? Blueberries are healthy and they're cold and they're sweet. Start with that. Okay, Lord, but I'm still going to have ice cream after, but I'll start with blueberries. And to tell you what, after I had a bowl of blueberries, as big as that bowl of ice cream is, I was going to eat. I was good. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel bad about myself in the morning. So the Lord is so gentle and sweet. And he does give us a way out. Like the verse says, when we are tempted, he will provide a way out. He does. Mm -hmm. It's so remarkable to me. Yes, yes. And you know, you also talk about food being an idol. You know, what do you mean by food being an idol? And you know, how can we remove it or what we need to do to replace it? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, God's word says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And uh, the, the, the Ten Commandments says, you know, there, there shall be no other gods before me. And so as I think about food, and I think this is a very sneaky trick of our enemy, he will use anything. If he can slide anything right in between us and God, he will. Mm -hmm. And even, Mm -hmm. even if it's a cookie. So Mm -hmm. if I am going to that cookie first for solace, help, um, feeling better to meet a need, if I'm going to a cookie first and not God then, then, you know, that, that little tiny thing, as simple as it is, is just squeezing God off the throne of my life. Mm. And so just for us to be very cognizant and aware of who we go to first, number one, That's so you know, good. Mm-hmm. if I want to have the cookie later, after I go to God, that's, you know, that's a decision I will make with him and got, you know, a cookie, like I said, cookie isn't bad. Ice cream's not bad. Um, but how much we miss out on when we don't go to God first, when we have a need and we go to food. And then sometimes we, the food will soothe us and give us that kind of food coma. And we forget to even go to God because we feel a little better, but in the morning it all piles up again. And so that's kind of the idea of just like stopping and pausing and praying and going to God first with our need and then thinking about food. Mm -hmm. That's so good. That is so good because, you know, I know we're talking about food, but, you know, sometimes uh, we put TV ahead. We put family ahead. We put anything else sometimes ahead before God. And that becomes an idol. But even with food, a lot of times people say food, how can food, you know, be an idol? But the way you said it, putting that first before you go to God or going to eat because you're frustrated, it's like drinking alcohol for those that, you know, struggle with alcoholism. You know, it's like taking that drink first before going to God first, because we're really not dealing with the root issue. Um, And so I just love how you bring that out is that, you know, before you take that cookie or before you get that ice cream, you know, go to God first about what you're stressing about. And sometimes we take it lightly, but that's truly something that we have to do, um, Julia, because that is a problem at times that could be even when we're dealing with food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I couldn't remember to do this. And I found this when I, when I first started to work on my food, like I really realized it was a spiritual issue for me, which was so horrifying. Like I I couldn't believe that I had, oh gosh, that I, that, you know, I, I was putting food in the place that I had put it. Mm -hmm. Um, I found a, a bear. It was like a big plastic bear, the size of a milk carton. And I put it into my fridge because I needed something to, to remind me that I had let the bear of food attack me and I wasn't going to let it attack me anymore. 
and I needed to go to God to be saved, even from food. And so, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like I said, I know that great nutrition is important. So I'm not talking about like restricting or not eating, but I'm talking about for me when I was excessively overeating and compulsive eating. And so I put that bear in there. And the first time my husband opened the fridge, he screamed, like, he was like, what's that? You know, (laughs) but we had a big, uh, we had a big chuckle about it. And I kept it in there for a while because at first it's very hard to remember to go to God first because eating comes so naturally. Eating is a part of who our lives and mm-hmm. what we need to do. So, um, I actually have a printable that we, that I can share in the show notes okay. on my website. That is a bear of food. And so you can print out that bear, go to my website, one step to wellness.com and print out that sheet. And then it's big enough to like put around a milk carton if you need to, or just tape in your fridge to remind you that, you know, we, we gotta be alert that the enemy isn't deceiving us. And taking away that moment, that first moment where we go to the Lord and he changes our life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, Julia, if a person, I love this, if a person wants to include Jesus in their eating, how would you suggest they start? Oh, yes. Wonderful. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think it's as simple as Lord help Jesus help, Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, and just pausing and giving him a moment to help. Uh, He promises us that he will help when you are tempted, he will provide a way out. And I'm not great about um, references, but um, the Lord is faithful. And Mm -hmm. and when we are tempted, he will provide a way to stand up, uh, to stand up under it. And so we know that he is going to help us. So if you can put things in your home, um, Bible verses, a little post-it note, a little reminder, uh, maybe even it's, if you are in a place where you don't want people to kind of be aware, you can even put the number one on a sticky note and put it in your tempting places. So you remember that God, go to God first. What am I going to do first? Step one. And then just kind of help yourself get into the groove of remembering because at first it is very hard and just saying, please, Lord, help me and seeing what the Lord does for you, because what I needed the Lord to do for me will be different from what you need the Lord to do for you. And, Mm -hmm. and he is so personal, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And he's loving and he's concerned about us. And he's concerned about the, every hair on our head. He's concerned about everything about us. And so if we come to him, even with that, he's going to help us. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, Julia, the scripture you was talking about was first Corinthians 10 and 13. And it says, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. So he is there and he will not allow us to be tempted above that, which we um, can be tempted with, but he's faithful. And if we just come to him um, and share with him and say, God, I need your help. He will be there for you, like Julia said. And so that's the scripture that came to that when you were talking about that was the scripture, Julia. And it's so important for you listeners to understand that, um, that God is there for you and that you are able to break that addiction and that food stronghold that you're dealing with. Would you pray for the listeners today, Julia, that may be struggling with um, breaking a food stronghold, which, you know, comes from a deep spiritual issue or loneliness or whatever they may be dealing with, would you mind praying for the listeners today? Oh, I would love to do that. I would love to do that. Thank well, you. let's, let's pray together. Yes. Lord, we come to you and, and we thank you for your many gifts. We thank you for food and how wonderful it is and that you have made it with such creativity and loveliness. Yes. And God, we also thank you for our bodies. Like You gave us an amazing body gift that we can use to serve you in this world. And it is remarkable. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you, God, for you, that you love us, that you sent your son, Jesus, to die for us so that we could be, we could be saved and we could be with you, not just in heaven, but that we could be saved and we could be with you right here by the power of Jesus, your power and the Holy Spirit. So God, I just pray for the listener today who's really struggling with food, 
And God, I ask you to show that listener specifically, personally, and in such a loving way that only you can do, Lord, that you see that you love them and that you can and will and that you want to help them overcome this for better health, joy in their life, not just with food, Lord, but with everything our lives bring that you are the one who wants to be first in our life because when we put you first, you get to show us how awesome you are and what you can do and how much you love us, Lord. So let us be willing to come to you and be loved by you first. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much, Julia, for being a part of the podcast today. Would you let listeners know how they could get in touch with you and get more information? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, thank you, Tiffany, for having me. It's been <laughs> You're great. welcome. You're welcome. It's just delightful. Yeah, so you can reach me at one step to wellness.com. And you can also find my book, Dear Food, I Love You, I Hate You, Don't Leave Me, a Bible study program designed to help you shatter food strongholds for lasting health and joy. You can get that on Amazon. Recently, book two came out, workbook two. It's great to do in a group because there's so much wisdom and experience in a group. And so if you get a chance, grab some friends and do it together. And so that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. You can also find me uh, at Dear Food Study on Facebook and Julia Fixie on Instagram. Great. Thank you so much, Julia. And listeners, I will also have all of her information in this podcast notes as well so that you can reach her and make sure to go by and get the book and to go through the Bible study. I know it will help you again. The Lord helped her to lose those 60 pounds, which is amazing. And congratulations again, Julia. Um, And we know that it is the Lord that will be able to help you if you include him along your journey and your eating journey. He will be there in order to help you. And so listeners, until next time, God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Tasty Tidbits with Dr. Tiffany Watkins. If you're enjoying the show, feel free to subscribe, rate, and share with your friends. To learn more about Dr. Tiffany, check out her blog on goodreads.com or visit her website at www.renewedfaithministriesinc.com. Until next time, stay blessed.